ya te Goedemorgen, good morning to those who have not reached it. Marcus, hoe sit die dan? Dat was hier. Sorry, Tim, hij is recht, hij is recht, hij is recht. What a lovely sound it is to hear the rain falling on the on the roof of this building of ours. I went for a, for a walk with the twins this morning and it was only starting to get cloud, um, cloudy and overshadowed and I thought to myself, Griek, I wonder what will happen if it starts pouring now, but I said, I don't mind, I'll run then, as long as the rain falls. Um, what a privilege it is once again to meet in the name of the Lord Jesus and how He loves us. And I hope that each every one of us has, um, as Thea also said, experienced His love in this week. I'm challenged the past um, few weeks or maybe months just to, to think about of what the Lord has done for us on a daily basis. Because we so often just take His grace for granted. We are all sitting here because of of His grace that's sufficient for us. We sang about it now as well. Um, but, but the challenge is, is, do we really grasp the vastness of His love and His grace? Um, I must tell you this little story of my little boy, Simon, as we left last week. He's now, for some other reason, on this stage where he constantly affirms us of His love and he asks us, how much do we love Him? So, being a five-year-old, he doesn't have a grasp of, of, of huge numbers yet. So, he would say, I love you a dozen lemoen, a veertig, twintig, dozen, sieve. And lemoen is now million, by the way. If you, and then I would say something else. And now, for, he's, he's, he's now thought in his head, well, um, he says, one sister stays out in Somerset West, um, excuse me, in Gordon's Bay. So, then the other day, he said to me, he loves me so much from Tania Dali's eyes, taught by the Siederberger. We were at the Siederberger on my birthday. So that's now huge. Okay. But anyway, it gets better. So last week we're driving to my mother in law, and he's once again on this tangent. And I tell him and I express in numbers that doesn't make sense how much I love him. And he says to me, Daddy, Papa, I so lief for you, so long as what I care. Daddy, I love you as much as long as a church service is. So you can just imagine. So I just thought, okay, there's no answer. There's no reply to that. Because how, how long is that? How big is that love for a little one? I remember when I was in church, I thought, oh, Greek, when does this thing ever end? So that's now the ultimate. I can't outdo that. So I hope that you experience that in this morning, that that is how much the Lord Jesus, well, not how much He loves us, Way more than that. And he wants us, a life, wants us to have a life of abundance. Um, we're experiencing his grace. We're sitting here with a te- life testimony, if I can call it like that, with the twins here in the now, where the Lord has touched her. I'm, I'm convinced of that. And I'm certain that each and every one of us is convinced of that. And um, in my quiet time and preparing for, for, for this morning, I was thinking there's a lot of Scripture, and I asked this morning as well for the Lord, just to direct me through all the scriptures that's been popping into my head and things to say. Um, and the theme, uh, or I want to start off with, with, let's call it like that, life after filthy rich. And just before you get scared, I'm not going to say we're walking out of your millionaires with a lot of money in your pockets. Um, actually, it's going to be to the opposite. Um, and we know that when we are truly um, grafted in the Lord, that we will be experiencing opposition, 
and things will be tough. It's one of the songs, I think the second last song we say, we sang about it, um, that the Lord's grace is, is, is enough for us and let us walk in that. Um, it's not, in, in, in scripture, in Psalm it says, uh, anyway, it's not about, you know, but there's a Psalm that says, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him from them all. Um, I've been reading a, 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 a book about a, a, um, a, mis- or a evangelist or a, a man of God. Let's call him just a man of God. And describing in, in severe poverty that they live in, and he lives in. But his testimony of how good the Lord is and how gracious the Lord is, is absolutely phenomenal. Um, and even after all these years, he's been serving the Lord since 1974. To this day, he does not own a house. And he says that he does not know what he will be giving his children except for the Lord Jesus. Um, and he says that that is, since, the, since his little boy was conceived, he was praying that his boy will know the Lord Jesus and follow him with all his heart. And what an what a, a example that is and what a prayer that is, might, will, must be for us as parents, but for us as individuals as well, for our own lives. We're sitting here week after week in Sundays. Wednesdays we come together for, for breaking of bread. We pray on Friday mornings the men. And I'm pretty certain we spend on a daily basis time with the Lord. Um, but I want to ask us this uncomfortable question in this morning. How much of that is religion or tradition or repetition or a habit? And how much of that is because of a true intense desire and love for the Lord Jesus. Wanting to hear His voice every morning, afresh and anew for you. He wants, on every morning, He has a message for you, for us, for each and every one of us. Um, And this brother has also, he's been witnessing in the the Western church. And the people ask him, but uh, why is the the evangelism and, and the growing and the revival of, of, of the Word of God, where He comes from. And it says, if you truly want revival to start, you must know the Word of God. You must know the Word of God. Because by knowing the Word of God, you are ready and able to hear the voice of the Lord. Um, the Lord speaks, and in this book, there's a lot, of, a lot of scripture that this guy quotes of the Lord speaking to him. And he's in affliction, and then he is reminded of a verse, and then he, he draws his strength from that. Now, surely, if he didn't know the word of God, he could he would he wouldn't be able to stand on that word. Um, and he's been he's been tortured physically. He's currently in the West, as I say, and he says the the the, the afflictions of the West is in a certain extent. Um, worse than than physical uh, persecution because that was something that's done to his body. In the West, the let's call it denomination. The children of God rises up against the children of God, saying, "But that pity over there proclaims this doctrine. That one over there does this, and they attack him as well. They try to score his his reputation and and make it filthy and." Uh, saying things that happened to him as spreading it in a bulletin or a newspaper saying it's not true, trying to um, detract the people from coming to him. And that's what we face in the Western world. Uh, People, we're not, by the grace of God, thanks for that, not being whipped or tortured, but there at the bride place for you. Talk about the Lord Jesus and people will look at you and say, but there's three rules. You don't talk about politics. You don't talk about religion. What's the onion? Rugby. What? Skinner. Skinner. You shouldn't Skinner. Um, and I think that's how we grow up. I must. I must admit. I'm also. Also, I've been in that mold that you don't speak about, as I say, politics and the Lord when it comes to a social gathering where we are now just relaxing. But how wrong is that? We must constantly be 
uh, witnesses to the Lord for what the great work that is done in our lives. Colossians, um, I want to take you to Colossians, please. Um, sorry, I must say the chapter and verse 3, verse 15. <laughs> Colossians 3, 15. <clears throat> Before we get there, a few weeks ago I had the privilege of listening out in Blue Downs. We've got a little, hopefully a fellowship developing over there, and it's, it's quite exciting. And we're going out, I think Benny and Theo is going out again this, after, uh, this morning to go there. And uh, these people have been meeting for quite a while, and, and the Lord just prompted me on that morning to ask the question, if there's now a meteorite coming in and hitting this small little garage, we're meeting in a garage, hitting this garage, and we wiped out. Uh, do we know where we're going? We're sitting with how much people? Six, seven, maybe eight. Um, and first of all, we're also sitting with the translation, bit of a communication issue. Some of them do understand English, and sometimes it's translated into Kaza slash Zulu slash some other a combination of those three languages. But anyway, so I had to ask again. I said, listen here, if you die now, something happens to you now. Do you know where you're going? Are you going to heaven? I asked that question. Are you certain you're going to heaven? And um, there was two or three ladies, or one or two ladies that said yes. And then there were some who were sitting there, not, uh, not saying yes, but not saying no either. And then there's a few that said, uh, no, they don't. And I want to ask you in this morning, is that meteorite hits us now? Do you have full confidence, full confidence, that when you, when in that instant, when we die, because it says when we die, in that instant we are with the Lord Jesus, or we are being tormented, like that rich man that did not give the food to Lazarus. In Luke we read about that, and, and they, the, the saints were then gathered in Abram's bosom, and this man looked over the gulf and saw this poor man and said to him, Father Abram, can't he just dip his tip of his finger in some water to put it on my tongue to give me some relief? <clears throat> and we know the story that the gulf was in the way and also, yeah, he couldn't go. And then he asked Father Abram to send up his uh, Lazarus back to his brethren. He had five brothers to go there and to tell them of this place of torment. And then Abram said, he, they, have the Mo they have Moses and the prophets. If that is not enough, then surely a man rising from the dead won't convict him either. Now we're sitting here with the Lord Jesus as well. We've got Moses and the prophets in the Old Testament and we've got a New Testament, the Lord Jesus living in our hearts. <coughs> So the question is, are you sure that he is living in our heart? So, so when that meteorite hit now, that we are there on the other side, where it's nice, and the streets are paved with gold, and we're praising the Lord Jesus, and we're in his presence. I'm detracting, detracting slightly, but while speaking about this, I spoke to Sandra this week, Wednesday evening, and Rian in... Um, in um, Jessica, they were sitting there with Tara and, and Aniska sitting, they were sitting here last week. They newly converted, I don't know if you know about it. We praise the Lord for that. I was speaking to Sandra and, it's, and she told me a bit of their story and Jessica that went to this lady and he, she dragged um, um, Rian with afterwards and he didn't want to go because it sounded a bit Vicky? Church, churchified or Vicky voodoo of like, yeah, and he said to Sandra that this lady took him through a few steps and he was walking with the Lord Jesus. 
He was walking with the Lord Jesus. What a privilege that must have been. His children, I think what are they now? They've given their heart now two weeks, three weeks. Three weeks. This little boy, so I don't know if you saw them, say to Sandra or whoever, the devil, ach, see toch, Livy, he says, the devil uit papa and mama uit geskop. That is what our Lord Jesus does. They, he changes lives so that little children, and I'm pretty certain Rian and Jessica wasn't saying, um, um, all of a sudden being, sitting there reading their Bible and thou shalt not and we're doing this. That little children saw it from how they acted all of a sudden. How they went about speaking to each other, speaking to the children. The love of the Lord Jesus was shining out of them so that the children could not but say, Jesus is devil at the school. Huh? How amazing is that? And that is what the Lord Jesus wants us. And this is what I'm tongue-in-cheekly writing over here. Life of the filthy rich. I often, where this thing comes from, when Lisa, my, my wife, Lisa, for, for um, um, Werner and Tani Vicky, what you weet, I've got a wife, I have a wife, yes. Her name is Lisa. So when we lie in bed in the evenings, on quite a few occasions, and I leave us like a leopold and I go fast, and I say it for, Life of the filthy rich. And what I mean by that is, not Bill Gates, not whoever can have a nicer bed and can be, can experience a greater satisfaction than being with your wife. Um, and your children is just next door, they're sleeping contently, and then it's really life of the filthy rich when they're sleeping. Um, so this is now tongue in cheek what I'm writing here, but the Lord Jesus wants us to have a life of abundance. We know that's in the scripture. It says, the thief comes to steal and destroy and deceive. But I come to give you a life and a life of abundance. And that abundance is not coming from earthly things. It's not coming from what car you drive. It's not coming what you dress. It's not coming from your bank balance. It's coming from an intimate relationship with the Lord Jesus. Just like Jessica and Rian is currently experiencing, I'm pretty certain they will give everything they have to, um, in exchange for what they, or let's put it like that, if they now can stand, go back to where their life was, having experienced this bit of the Lord Jesus and experienced obviously their life of the past 30 years, I'm pretty certain if it comes to them now and they say, give up whatever to experience this life with the Lord Jesus. They would say, Amen, I'm doing that. And that's what we are called for. We need to lay down certain things. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. That's a leading from the Holy Ghost um, saying to us in this morning. Let us not um, um, stand on our own strength. There's a psalm, and I was there now, but I turned to Colossians. We're going there now. It says, who will ascend unto the hill of the Lord, or who will stand in his holy place? He who has skin hands and a pure heart, a pure heart, who is not sworn deceitfully, and has not lifted up his soul unto vanity. Vanity is ego puppy. That is what we live and thrive on. We want people to look at us and see Greek Andre. He is, just look at that, he is amazing. He's so slim. He's got so much money. He's so beautiful. Yeah, okay, that's okay. Pretty is fine. Um, I can't do anything about that. Um, he's so successful in earthly things. And then we walk around with our chest being boasted out. We press it out and we just say, come to me for wisdom. I can show you the way. And then the, further, the rest of that psalm says, the person who's got clean hands and a pure heart, and has not sworn deceitfully, nor uh, lifted up his um, soul unto vanity. He shall receive the blessing from the Lord, and the righteousness from the God of his salvation. In the Lord Jesus, we are righteous. We don't need anything else. We can only, the only requirement to be um, entering into heaven, if I can call it like that, is to be dressed in the righteousness of the Lord Jesus. And that we have by believing that the 
Father has raised Him from the dead, that He died for us on the cross. Romans 10, 9 and 10 says, with the mouth we, we confess, or if we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus, and we believe in our heart that God has raised Him from the dead, we will be saved. There's no Tidalan tankies on that. There's no uh, bells and whistles like all these life insurance products one gets these days where you have to gym a certain number of times to get a certain status, to get to gold, to get a discount, to don't know what to do else, what you have to do. All the Lord Jesus wants us is all of our heart. Um, then we have His righteousness. <clears throat> Colossians 3, verse 15. And the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which you are also called in one body, and be ye thankful. By having the Lord Jesus in our heart, and that's the only way. I don't have a a feed camera heart like Francois drew the other time, time or three days ago, three weeks, four weeks ago. But we all know that this is hard. Okay, if you don't know, I'm telling you this is hard. So the peace of God we can only experience if you have the Lord Jesus in our hearts. Um, that's the peace of God that this guy that I told you about testifies of when he is persecuted, when he is being whipped or shocked with the electric baton, or whatever. Um, Any is quite fond of the verses that says, don't worry, don't care, don't give regard to people who can kill the body, but have no power to cast you into hell or put you in heaven. Have regard to the one who can, after you dead, dictate where your soul goes. Obviously, meaning the, lo- the Lord. He is the one that casts you into bring you into, welcome you into heaven, or we're speaking about a loving God, but we also have a righteous and just God. And He's loving and He's showing us His patience by not coming to fix the bride of Christ, not coming to fix His church. He wants no one to go to perish. We know that. It stands in the Scripture. But please don't come, become complacent and think, we have this all loving and all um, encompassing and all passion, um, um, compassionate Father, which we do have. But it's also righteous and just. And on that day of reckoning, He will come and He will ask, and you are accountable. The Lord Jesus is in our heart, and with that, we can have the peace of God, even though we are um, experiencing trials and tribulations. It says in Philippians, um, let's turn to Philippians. Can you still hear me? I could hear my best thing so. Theo, can you hear me still? Okay. I'm going there now. I'm just looking for it as well. Uh, 4 verse 7. Excuse me? Okay, maybe we just can you have a deal in the so that I can use those Philippians 4, verse 7, it says, And the peace of God which pass all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. It's a well known verse. But when you speak to someone who's been afflicted and who's been in trouble, who's having to deal with cancer, also on this guy. Um, well, Eric, work. I was thinking in this week the miracles that the Lord has done in this room of ours, and I'm not talking about this building, about these people sitting here. Amazing. And are we really grasping the magnitude thereof? Are we really living in that and saying thank you to the Lord for that? Um. The most recent one, sorry, I just have to go back to that. Because we've been praying for her and, or them. And 
where Marcus has been saying that that specialist is sitting here had to measure twice and he just shook his head. Huh? That's what happens when you come into contact, when you deal, when, when the Lord Jesus is with you. You just sit there and you shake your head and you think, who is that Mwantla? This is impossible. But for God, nothing is impossible. And that's when we have people with facing cancer, people going through difficult pregnancies, people, my little daughter, Yana, we had to go to a second specialist. The first lady said, there's something wrong with her hearing. We prayed for her. At home, I anointed her. I prayed in the name of the Lord. I said, I prayed for perfect little twins. And if this is per perfection in your eyes, just reveal that to me and I will be happy with that. And we went into, she was put under on a, on Narcosa. And that little lady zapped her with things in her ear, bouncing it over the dromiki and her brains and I don't know wherever. And she said, everything is fine. And I, to this day, still believe it's the Lord Jesus. I actually wished... No, 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 that's not wrong. That's not the right word I'm wanting to say. I just wanted the test, that super-duper test. First to confirm that she couldn't hear, and then that she heard. Because the initial observations was in a room with sound banging off the walls. Lisa could not stand it. She had to sit with Jana on her, on her lap. Jana ignored that sound like a stop start. Not doing anything. Not even on the highest. And that's why the lady said, there's no way she must have at least just turned her head. <clears throat> so that was the initial test. And the second test said, and that's the Lord Jesus. We're sitting with the Lord. And that's the peace, knowing that He can do anything. He can carry us. His love is massive. But once again, I'm, I'm urging you, Please don't com be compl become complacent of this love. Appreciate it. Take it for yourself. Walk with it. Talk about it. What was it now? The peace of God. Oh, now I'm going to go to the to do. Please. Uh, Colossians. No, you can't do it. Let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which you are also called in one body. We are sitting here as one body of Christ. This is the, the master plan of the Father. Sending His Son, the Lord Jesus, to become a, um, a servant, showing us the way, and then putting, leaving behind the body of Christ, which we are. So in the body of Christ, we are encouraged, we are experiencing the peace of God. We've spoken about this in the past and we know the importance of the body of Christ and that's why it's important that we gel together, that we care for one another, that we pray for one another, um, that we love one another. If we're not going to have the love of the Lord for the people that we are in fellowship with, for the people that we know, how are we going to do it for the tiny what langs us in the reis staan na die tol toe? We must show the love year for each other and in that we grow to take out the love to um, the rest of the world. <coughs> and then oh, Rita Blijf maar weer blauw. Ik heb eindelijk rooi gehad het nou. Wat is die Engelse mensen? Thankful 2, L of 1. 1. Thank you. Yeah. Be you thankful. We have the privilege of experience the, the, the finger of God, if I can put it like that, in our fellowship. Frequently. By, by people being touched physically. But it's important that we don't chase the signs and the wonders and we don't think that the Lord is only there for 911 to 
to call and say, hey, help us, help us, we've got an issue, we've got a problem with the problem, my corp is here, my rug is here, whatever is here, please come and help. The greatest miracle is when people are sitting here that was in the world and being convicted of their sin and turning their life around. Rian and Jessica, we really experienced a miracle last week where we saw the effect of a miracle. With people who was in the world, and Henny and Sandra must have been speaking to them about the Lord Jesus for many years. And I'm not saying now this lady had a special uh, gift of doing it. It's just she was at the right time, at the right place. The field has been prepared by Henny and Sandra. Uh, the seed has been sown, and maybe the rain has, was kept away. And so, somewhere along the road, the rain started falling, and this little seed had to ontkim, germinate. And this lady was too far left there and said, Goeie bieke mis, um, what's it in Engels? Manure. She manures that, manures that little field, and then all of a sudden pops out a new life. And we can testify this morning, as it says in 2 Corinthians 5.17, I'm a new creature in Christ. All things are become new. The old is passed away. Praise the Lord for that. And that's what it must be, as Owens. That's how it must be. You must be a new creature. Your sons and your daughters, your friends and your family, your parents must be able to say, What is this? What happened there? You know, I'll go to this now again because I'm unthankful here, but anyway. Be ye thankful for what the Lord has done for us. We must run to His throne on a daily basis, falling flat on our faces and just saying, Lord, thank you, thank you, thank you. And He prayed about it this morning. But thank you for your mercy and your grace, which is sufficient. Which is sufficient for us. In our weakness, the strength of the Lord can really come through. Otherwise, the Athenid is Akka. Akka's amazing. I did that. I had money in, money in the bank. I could do that. Or I could do this. It's only in the weakness that there's really opportunity for the Lord to work and to show it. And that's what the Lord said to Paul as well. He said, my grace is sufficient for you. And it's a prayer of my heart that the Lord shows me as well and that He will show mercy on me as, for, for me on the fact uh, or, or to experience His mercy and grace with regards to the saving of my soul instead of just um, thinking that the Lord is there where there's things to be seen, meaning physical things. Where lives are saved, by the glory of God, thank you for that. But we must be thankful. I'm reminded while standing here of the story of, of um, the ten lepers who were there on the outcast and the Lord Jesus passed by and they came to him and he said to them, he didn't heal them in that instant, he said to them, go and show yourself to the Pharisee or the pickies in the temple. What's the name? The priest. Thank you. Go and show yourself to the priest turn around and they go. And on their way there, they suddenly re realized, Krita, we are healed. And I still hope they did go to the priest. But one of those ten came back. Yes. Only one came back to say thank you. We are all um, cured from leprosy. And this guy described it in a testimony as a cancer of the spirit. We are all cured from that. Are we turning back and going back to the Lord and saying thank you for that? Um, begging Him for, uh, for His mercy on us that we so often neglect that and comes with a little washing list to Him. Say, Lord, please help me with this. Give me my courses. Help my kinder. Help me with my Do this, do that. Help me in my business. Which is not wrong. But we are reminded in the word that it says God knows that we need that. He knows that the heathen also need it. 
and his sun shines over the, the righteous and the unrighteous, and this rain is falling on the righteous and the unrighteous. <clears throat> Let us be thankful for the Lord, for what He has done in our life. Um, seeking, as I started off, seeking to know His Word. The word life over here, I think if you speak to, if you, wacht, wacht, ek doe koukies, wacht met sakkie. Nou, rooi is. Dan moet jy dit terugvat. So, kijk, miskien werk jy groene. Ja, groene werk. Life, Call it, I'm going to use the word current life. We most often just think about life, and when we define life, we think of it as what we hear now, in here now on earth. But the Lord Jesus has promised us eternal life. Once again, going back to now, now when I said that old man and the rich man and Lazarus, when he was he was um, transformed in an instant to um, um, to be with. Abram, in Abram's bosom. Hier is nou klomp goed, het is hier so wat ek nou wil maak so, hè. En daar is ook. Everything can now link to that. John 17 verse 3 says, John 17 verse 3 The Lord Jesus wants us to have eternal life and it says here and this is life eternal this is eternal life that you might know the only true God and Jesus Christ who he has sent Eternal life, as I said in the past, does not start when the meteorite hits this little room. Eternal life has started when you gave your life to the Lord Jesus. And I also want to say and encourage you that does not that's not necessarily only having to happen once. We are all human. We are still in the flesh. We know that. We are still carnally minded sometimes. We are striving for perfection. The Lord Jesus is the one perfecting us. But I want to say there's no shame in it that if you have given your heart to the Lord, but in along the way you've stumbled and things came into your life, the weeds came up, you didn't pull out the weeds. There's no shame in that going back to the Lord and repenting again and say, Lord, I'm asking you for your forgiveness. Please forgive me and help me. The shame is for one day when you're sitting up in heaven or at the judgment seat and you haven't done that. So please, I'm, I'm asking you, I'm encouraging you. Make sure that when that meteorite hits here, that we are all zapped up and going to the same place. Um, the peace of God will be in your heart knowing that you know where you're going when something happens to us. Knowing that His mercy and His grace is sufficient for us. And that's all that we live in. If you, if you, if you, if you read about the rich man um, going to the Lord Jesus and saying to Him that I've uphold all the commandments and everything since I was a little boy. And I think the Lord said to him, yes, you've done that. Well done. Now, go and sell everything and follow me. And he could not do that. He walked away with a corp on the back to his earthly belongings because that is where his heart was. Our heart needs to be with the Lord Jesus so that we know. Uh, so that we know that we know that we know. Um, and it's because of that we need to acknowledge the grace of God and only once we come to that place and saying, Lord, 
I am useless and filthy and I can't do anything in my own power. And that's why that rich man walked away. Because all the things that he did up until then, he did it out of his own. Giving his tithes, his own money. Maybe helping someone, not being jealous, not killing, not murdering, not doing this, not doing that. But that's the law. Out of his own strength, he upheld the law. And he was a proud and um, a proud man and actually boasting about it to the Lord Jesus. Thank him. Since I was a young man, I've upheld all the commandments. But I want to say, even the Lord cannot work where there's a proud heart. We need to come before Him and break our heart. Like we've heard in this week, five loaves and two fishes. The only way in which the miracle could be performed was when the fish and the bread was broken. And so we need to be broken before Him, repenting, saying sorry, asking for His forgiveness and His love and His mercy, which He then freely gives in abundance. And your life will be changed. Amen. Just going to pray for us. Yes. Yes. Mm. Oh man, what a verse. Hebrews, Hebrews 4 verse 7. If you hear your voice, do not harden your hearts. Obedience. <clears throat> Lord Jesus, we come to you in this morning and we just thank you, Lord, for this rain that's falling on this roof of ours, Lord. Lord Jesus, we say thank you that you are a righteous God, a loving God, a merciful God. But we also say thank you, Lord, that you are a just God and a, a jealous God. You are jealous of our souls, Lord. And Lord Jesus, why not? You came to this earth and suffered and died. You were whipped and mutilated almost beyond recognition, Lord, for us. Surely you must be jealous for the guys that you, or for the souls that you purchased by your dying on the cross. Lord Jesus, and I pray in this morning that each and every one of us sitting here, Lord, will be touched anew by you, Lord. Will be convicted by the Holy Ghost of our wrongdoings and our shortcomings, Lord. And Lord, I pray that we won't be sitting in a corner weeping about it and thinking, oh, woe be unto me, what can I do? I am but a useful sinner. Lord Jesus, that's not what you want. All that you want is for us to soften our hearts, to come to you and say, Lord, please forgive me. I have sinned. I'm a sinner. I'm un unrighteous. I'm a proud person. I think I can do things on my own, but I can't, Lord. Lord, I need your peace to reign in my heart, your spirit to dwell in me. And Lord Jesus, we can be assured that you will rush. Lord, it says in your word that you wait impatiently uh, to be of assistance to us. Lord Jesus, and so I pray that you will touch us, that you will come into our hearts, that you will renew our lives, even though if we have committed our lives to you on a previous occasion, Lord, renew a right spirit within us. Cast us not away, Lord. Lord Jesus, we thank you for the fact that we can come to you and that you are waiting for us with your arms wide open, welcoming us back into the palace, into the kingdom of God. And that we can be fellow heirs with you, Lord. That we can cry out to God, Abba, Father. Lord Jesus, thank you, thank you, thank you for the work of the cross. Thank you for paying for our salvation. Lord Jesus, we honor you in this morning. We praise your mighty name. And we pray that your kingdom will be done, will come here on earth as it is in heaven, Lord. Yet your will be done. 
Help us to be thankful, Lord, for that is the will of the Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You could watch me if you do it,